Hello and happy Wednesday. I am Kat Cooker. My pronouns are she, her, and welcome to Game Design Lab. Uh, it is a Wednesday morning um, activity that I like to do in the middle of the week to break things up. Um, it was inspired by um, playing solo games on Monday and uh, having really great conversations in chat um, to help build worlds and NPCs and that sort of thing. And um, I'm continuing on uh, doing this um, in its own time slot, I guess, on Wednesdays to, to do, some, do some world building. Um, the last stream I did was uh, I actually uh, did a micro game for the first time. Um, but one of the main things we've been doing uh, since I started is doing, uh, creating this uh, collaborative world. Um, so we started the very first uh, game design lab. We created an NPC together named Dahlia Stonefell, a little goblin um, artificer apprentice. And since then, we've built a, a bigger world. Um, we know that it is sort of an urban fantasy uh, setting in a city. Um, there is, so her, um, the artificer that she works for, um, we thought originally was the big bad, but they turned out to be doing what they do because there's a bigger, badder big bad um, by the name of Frederick Serpentine, who is, originally we started off making him a vampire, um, but he's kind of evolved into more of a um, snake-like vampire in this world. And it's just been a lot of fun chatting and creating these uh, these little bits. So Frederick, um, we also created a magic item for him. Uh, so it's uh, it's this uh, snake charm armband that he wears, and it has um, you know the ability uh, spells to cast spells like charm. Um, we created a, a lair for Frederick, which turned out to be, um, uh, what is it? Um, wanted to make it very urban, so made a, it's an abandoned fact, uh, potions factory that was um, taken over by Frederick, who's a business import-export um, capitalist type character. Um, and he transformed this abandoned potion factory into a loft space, which I thought was just funny. Um, today, though, I wanted to continue working on the um, the world at large because uh, Jane the Geek in chat uh, on, I think it was on Monday, or maybe it was actually, what it might not have even been in chat, it might have been in Discord. Um, she thought it would be fun to maybe do um, um, what do you call it um, like a holiday for the world um, but I think we need to build the world out a little bit more so that we know what is important enough to have uh, a holiday um, she was thinking you know because Easter's coming up and I did a Valentine micro 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 game that was sort of inspired by Valentine's um, so yeah um, I think we're going to try doing some some more world building here to see what else we can do uh, uh, so we know what is important to the people and um, the inhabitants and you know the, the whatever body of government there might be here. There are definitely a few things that I want to keep in mind um, while while building this world. Um, So some of it is, you know, I don't want to incorporate any fantasy racism in here. I don't want to have any fantasy colonialism. I just want it to be a, a world where, you know, maybe the bad guys are are bad because of, um, like in Frederick's case, he wants power and power through controlling people or resources. Um, um, but I guess in a more capitalistic kind of way, rather than a colonial um, kind of way. Anyway, 
so far we have um, we have goblins in the city. We have sort of snake people in the city. And it got me thinking earlier today that maybe um, maybe we could play off of this a little bit more and have more what would traditionally be thought of as like um, scary or monstrous or um, not appealing type of uh, um, ancestries, I guess. Um, I, I think it would be cool to have the city populated by by them. So I think like goblins is great. Well, we can name snake people. Maybe we can have some rat people. Um, if we're in a little harbor, maybe there's, um, I don't know, like shark people, things like that. Um, So I'm going to move over to my journal here. And I'm going to just start writing some, some notes to brainstorm. So we currently have a, the setting is setting. urban fantasy city I think we were thinking that it was um it had sort of like a 1920s type of feel. And we do not have a name for this city yet. We also have population Of goblins, snake folk, snake people, another thought I had was maybe we could call the snake people and rat people, um, I don't look up what a group of snakes is called, group of snakes. A group of snakes can be called a den, a pit, a bed, or even a nest. Groups of snakes that form for feeding purposes. Hmm. What is a group of rats called? A mischief. I'm just going to take a, a note here because um, I want to try to come up with a better name than just snake people. Um, Den, pit, rats, people, mischief. What other creatures can we think about here? Hmm. 
Hmm. Trying to think of what else. Um, what else in a city is con is considered like not uh, generally considered not great. I don't want to make roaches because I just don't like them. Um, let's see. Maybe I should just overcome overcome that and make roach people. <laughs> Hmm. Um, all right, I think um, I'm going to move this section over so that I can work on some other things first. All right. Um, so we know that there is um, magic potions. Made here. I think that's a big part of what's in the city here. Mostly because like we we've got our um our little artificer and I think that is a, a huge part of the story that we have here. Um I believe we said it was to one side there are mountains. Maybe we'll, we'll actually make it surrounded by mountains. And we'll put the, the little um, uh, foresty part at the base, at the foot of the mountain. So the forest is at the foothills. I'm going to say that there is um, some sort of um, body of water, whether it's a, a lake or ocean. So I like the idea that this is just like this little this city that's built up, but it's kind of isolated in a lot of ways. So the mountains cut them off from um, other places, and then the ocean on the other side cuts them off as well.
So what else could this community thrive off of? I know that they have a hospital because um, Dahlia's sister, I can't remember her sister's name now. It's another flower, like dandelion or something like that. Maybe it was dandelion. Um, her sister is in the hospital. Maybe they are neighbors with a an ocean dwelling city, and that's where the shark people might come in. So we have a neighboring underwater community. Maybe there'll be a city also. And then the mountains. Neighboring underground. Oops. It's not going to fit there. Bring underground city. So already we've expanded this place quite a bit. going on here. Okay. So I'm going to say that there could be trade for Seashells. It's like, what is like coral when it um, is no longer like sort of alive? And what um what use that would have though? Maybe skip that for now. Um and then in the mount oh I forgot to write um probably have I'm not gonna say merfolk, I'm gonna say or maybe there's merfolk. Merfolk. Fishfolk. 
various types of fish folk. Oops. And then in the underground city, what are we going to have here? Maybe we've got things like kobolds. Like shrew or bull people. What do they trade in? Trade for um, root vegetation, minerals. So I'm going back to our, our city setting, and I think maybe the the this city, because it has the magic potions and the hospital, maybe it is focused on like curative medicine. Known for medicine, magical medicine. I'm going to add a page in here because I am running out of room for this part of the world building. Um, so for our setting, I'm thinking um, the area is probably settled by Maybe goblin healers and like the town name should probably have some or the city name should have some connection to either what they were doing or what they were looking for or a prominent goblin healer Maybe it was originally called just something simple like Healer's Circle or something.
Kaler's Crossing. And maybe now it's just called The Crossing. All right, so, so far we've got um, an urban fantasy city with a 1920s sort of vibe. Um, magic potions are made here. It's surrounded by mountains with a forest at the foothills. Um, the city is by the ocean. Um, it also has a very large hospital and it's known for medical, for magical medicine. The area was originally settled by goblin healers uh, who named it Healers Crossing, and then eventually it was renamed The Crossing. Now, we've also got two neighbors here. Um, we've got the underwater city um, that is populated by merfolk and various fish folk, um, and they trade for seashells, maybe some other stuff. And then in the mountains, they are... Um, there are neighbors uh, in an underground city that are filled with kobolds and maybe some shrew or vole type people who trade for root vegetation and minerals. I feel like some of this, uh, some of the trade is going to be for um, like spell and potion components. And perhaps on another day, we will tackle um, naming the ocean and mountain cities. Um, but today I'm thinking about what Jane the Geek um, wanted to talk about, and that was um, what sort of festivals might, um, might occur in this city. And so because it is um, basically a medical community, um, I'm thinking it's got to be related to, um, it's either gonna be like the, the found, founding of this place or some sort of scientific medical discovery. I like the latter because it doesn't feel like there's a lot of celebrations for that in, the, in our real world. Um, so I'm thinking that um, we'll do that. Now I have to figure out what, what it is that, um, that they're celebrating. Um, discovery of Um. Maybe we can make it like a really big festivity though because um because of how important it is and I'm just thinking for myself about like lunar new year and how um, how much time is spent um, sort of celebrating. It's not just a one day thing. So and that kind of it tracks for, you know, what would be a basically a scientific discovery. It's sort of like the the, the process is long. So maybe I look up, I can't remember what all the terms are for um, science. Science. Um, oh my gosh. 
My kid loves Ada Twist and um, I know that there are words that are just escaping my brain right now. Um, scientific method. So trying to think of how to make a make a a celebration based on the scientific method. Um So it's a, um, I don't know if it's weeks long or months long celebration. Let's say months long. Month-long festivities. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily like the community is involved in actually the scientific method. It's more like the the. Um, Oh, gosh, it's the, um, I'm at a loss for words right now. It's the, um, like the, the thing, the, the concept, the, um, the core idea, the, um, I'm not sure. Um, completely at a loss for words here. Uh, the sort of like the emotional connection, like the um, the essence of what this whole process is. So it's you know being curious. Um, So maybe like one bit of curiosity. Let's just change this so it's all in one like one curiosity it's about learning
asking questions. I don't know what this actually looks like as a festival, but two is I'm going to say it's like a reading week. Week three is So one of the key ones here, here is testing as an experiment. So let's see, like, I'm going to put experimenting, but it could be more like, um, um, experiencing new things. And then I'm going to say week four is the um, um, celebration of previous discoveries across the city. Here we go. We'll see how. Hello, Jane. Ah, oh, Jane, you still at work? Well, I I have been running with your idea of coming up with um, a a holiday or festival or something for um, for our collaborative little world here. And first, I had to create more about the city because we only had some characters some npcs the villain um, and a little bit no this has been really fun because i had to um i had to think about what else is in this world so i will recap here um so we have you know we have this urban fantasy city with the 1920s sort of vibe um we know that magic potions are made here. Um, I think in the original, in our very first um, game design lab, we talked about that it was surrounded by mountains. It is now. Um, and then I thought about, you know, the, um, what was it? The location that we made, the pit um, was, um, was kind of in a forested area. So I put the forest at the foothills of the mountains. Um, I also like the idea that this place is just isolated so i put an ocean so the city is is um, by the ocean surrounded by these mountains we also know that there's a large hospital here um, so i'm thinking that this particular city is known for magical medicine and then i got to thinking well who was it saddled by um, we already know that there are goblins here so i was thinking goblin healers who might have named it Gob um, healers crossing and then eventually renamed it to The Crossing. Um, and because they're so, I feel like the community really values um, medicine, like, because medicine is what they, what they were founded on. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, scientific method that's appreciated here. And I thought maybe a unique kind of holiday could be 
science based. And so I went and looked at, you know, the concept of the scientific method and how we could break that out into a longer festival. Um, much like recently Lunar New Year occurred, um, it's more than just one day um, of festivities. It's, it's you know, spread out. Um, so I was thinking like a month long um, um, festivities that took place over the course of a month. And then so tried to break it down. Um, I think it needs a little bit more finessing, but like week one, um, the city would be involved um, in activities that focus on curiosity. So it's all about learning and asking questions of, you know, maybe it's, you know, um, whether it's just being more, um, more interested in asking questions of other people or um, of themselves, whatever it may be. Um, and then week two is, I thought it would be nice to have like just a reading week um, where the whole city just you know does a lot of like active reading um there's a trend right now in the real world called i think it's called silent reading clubs where you just go to a place and read your book amongst other people um so i'm, I'm feeling like this is um this is probably what they do during this week week three um in the scientific method, there's um, um, a section of, like there's experimentation. So I was thinking how that could apply. Uh, yeah, I know I want a reading week too. Just don't do anything else but read. Um, week three uh, with experiments, I was thinking maybe that could be reflected in uh, just trying out having new experiences. And it's a week of just doing that. And then finally, week four would be the celebration of previous discoveries from the crossing. So again, I don't know how this really plays out um, in terms of what they do. Um, I, you know, some of it I want to have, you know, with maybe new food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I I don't generally read a lot right now um with a little one. Mostly what I read to Gra is what I read to Grayson. So it's uh it's a lot of middle grade books and the books that I do read are generally graphic novels because those are the ones that I can get through from start to finish. The last book I read was also kind of the ending was disappointing, so it just felt like I mean I liked the book to a certain point and then I didn't like the book anymore. So it was, um, it was rough. Um, yeah. So maybe like, maybe part of this is like, you know, I'm thinking about Lunar New Year because that's, you know, something that I celebrate and like a lot of Lunar New Year's, there's a lot of food involved. So maybe part of like the curiosity and asking questions is like recipe exchanges and, um, eating, um, so the new experiences could be eating new food. Um, put new food here. Could be a recipe exchange. And then the celebration of previous discoveries, maybe there could be like a, um, like parades and stuff like that. Um, Cause I just like the idea of parades, I don't know, parade. Um, What else could we do? A parade in week four, but there should be some other other activities that you could do in week four. Um, hmm. Thanks, Jane. I think it's I think it's a <laughs> a very unique 
uh, festival. Um, I don't, I just don't know what else to do here for the celebration of previous discoveries. I'm trying to think of what else um, to do for other things. Um, maybe it's, um, there's a banquet hosted by the city. Featuring um, meals, maybe the favorite meals of all right, favorite foods of. Of um, the healers who came up, who just made discoveries. Oh, maybe you can cosplay as favorite healer. <laughs> oh, I like that. First aid training kind of day. Yeah, I like that. I think this, this could be under new experiences, maybe. Or it could be week one. Um, first aid training. And then at the end, they have this parade featuring the favorite, and then they have a banquet that's hosted by the city featuring favorite foods of the healers who made those discoveries. And then you can cosplay as your favorite healer. Um, yeah, so we have the start of a, um, a holiday based on, um, you know, the history of the crossing. Um, <clears throat> I will let you know, because uh, we don't have a lot of time now, but um, uh, as I was developing the city, um, the crossing, I also made some notes here for future reference. <laughs> uh, for future reference here, so we could develop our world a little bit more. Um, the ocean has a neighboring underwater city. Um, I'm thinking that it probably has some merfolk and various fish folk um, and they trade for seashells and probably other things. I'm thinking both the communities um, probably have some trade in spell, uh, spell and potion components. Um, there's also this neighboring underground city in the mountains populated by kobolds and possibly shrew or wool people and they would trade for root vegetable, ve root vegetation and minerals. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> I think um, I think you know maybe next week we can tackle either the ocean or the mountain one. <clears throat> and I was also thinking that we um, we would populate our our city here. Oh, I think I put a note somewhere here. Yeah, population. So we have goblins. We already knew that. We kind of knew that we have a sort of snake people. Um, I was also thinking we could have rat people in the crossing. Um, but I also don't want to just call them snake people and rat people or snake folk and rat folk. So I was trying to come up with some kind of clever name and I was looking up um, what groups of animals are called. Um, so for snakes, it's it could be a 
a den or a pit, and then for ra uh, rats, um, they're called a mischief. So you might just sort of play off of those names for for these um, for these people. Um, but I wanted to populate the city with um, creatures that aren't necessarily like they're not human, um, but aren't always necessarily thought of um, in a, a nice light. Um, <laughs> too close to serpentine though frederick serpentine um yeah um i think i think that's pretty much it unless you have any any thoughts more on the on the on the festival here um I feel like um, I feel like this is something that you know you could run with in and sort of create your own um, your own uh, activities to do um, in this world, um, and this just provides a framework for a, a holiday that is probably not. Um, um, I feel like this maybe is not done in a has not been done in a fantasy world before. <laughs> uh, I I like it though. I was I was very much thinking about like um, my kid really likes Ada Twist, and I was trying to think of like the scientific method. And I don't know. I think um, I think it's just like a a fun, neat. Um, festival that isn't necessarily something that is done in the real world or appreciated in the real world and we have so many discoveries that are just not celebrated they're just sort of taken for granted and it would be nice especially because this community is so science uh, medicine medicine focused anyway um so i think that's it for game design lab i appreciate you um uh, giving me the um, idea to um, try this out, Jane, because I don't think I would have thought of this ordinarily. Um, it was a fun um, writing experiment here, uh, writing exercise. Um, I am not 100% sure if I'm going to be doing Craft Noon on Friday because it's Emerald City Comic Con. I know that I'm going on Friday, but I don't know if I'll be back on time. So I, I still have to like figure that part out. Um, however, um, if I do, it will be at, um, at one o'clock, um, Pacific, um, and, um, oh, the other thing I should say is I did pick what my solo game is going to be on, um, on Monday. I am going to play, uh, I found, uh, somebody, um, a friend of mine, um, pointed me to a solo version of um, Vason, um, which is a game I love. It's by Free League Press. It is um, it's Nordic, Gothic horror. Um, obvious. I, I I feel like I'm going to put the caveat here because it is my stream. It's not going to be too uh, gruesome. Um, so you know. Um, just keep that in mind. It is Gothic, um, Nordic horror, though. Um, but I, I love Vaisen. Um, it is really cool, and I'm really glad that um, I um, there's this opportunity to actually play it solo. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I I haven't actually like gone through too many of the of um, the rules yet. I just know that it's going to be a card based decision making tree, I guess, um, or prompts. So I will have a journal just like I usually do for solo RPGs. Um, and we're just going to investigate um, Basin, which are um, monsters in this world. Um, and yeah, that's um, that's that's the role of your character is to investigate um, these Basin that pop up around the world. So that's what I'll be doing on Monday um, for sure. All right. Well, um, I will see you online. Um, and uh, I, again, appreciate, Jane, um, your um, 
suggestion here because this this definitely wouldn't have happened without that suggestion and it also uh spawned a whole bunch of other ideas um so yeah um i will see you uh online and hopefully on friday if not um i will um i'll be back on monday all right take care